Well, everybody, we are certainly in the depths of the offseason, even with rookie Manny minicamp coming to an end, and we are in phase two of Packers minicamp where they are on Zoom calls, and uh, nothing too exciting going on at the moment quite yet, but there is still a lot of drama involving this Packers offseason. Today, I'm going to be talking about the topic on everybody's mind. The national heads can't seem to stop talking about it involving the Packers, and that is the running back three position. There's quite a lot of controversy involved around the Packers last year when Brian Gutekinds, after selecting a quarterback in the first round, going with a running back in round two with Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams on his roster. Um, you know, what wasn't taken into consideration with the criticism of that pick was the fact that both Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams were at the end of their rookie contracts. Jamal Williams did not end up getting that signed. He signed a pretty cheap deal with the Detroit Lions, and now the Packers are only left with Aaron Jones out of giving him, after giving him a pretty team-friendly deal worth $48 million over four years. That deal really is only $10 million in the first two years, so... Uh, they'll definitely see how Aaron Jones progresses and see if they want to pay him that big payday uh, when it comes to that third year on his contract. But besides the point, the Packers now have Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon uh, under contract for at least the next three years. So now the question on the depth chart lies behind them at running back three. A.J. Dillon was that guy last year. I'd be pretty surprised to see Green Bay, especially in Matt LaFleur's offense, roll into the season with only two running backs on the roster. They have quite a combination, quite the mix of very young guys that haven't seen the field too much that are going to get their opportunity this offseason to prove their worth and prove that they are deserving of a spot on the Packers roster. Today I'm going to be going through each of those guys and who I think is most likely to earn that running back number three spot. Let's start off with this year's 7th round draft pick, Kylan Hill out of Mississippi State. I'm really excited to see this guy play in the preseason, see him get his opportunity, which he will certainly earn a lot of, uh, specifically just because the Packers drafted him. Um, he's a really muscular dude at 215 pounds, 5'10", so a little bit shorter for NFL standards, but so is Aaron Jones, um, and, and he his muscular build is really part of his running style um, and he is going to impose his will um, you know he isn't as quick not as shifty as some others might be like Patrick Taylor on this list but Kylan Hill um, should certainly earn a chance I don't think he's too similar to AJ Dillon where you kind of have that worry of are we just put into the same thing and it's not he's not going to be able to change the pace of the game give the little, a defense a little shock um, I don't think he's too similar in that regard. Um, almost kind of a Jamal Williams, just reading up on him, is what I uh, kind of get from his playing style. One thing that might put Hill over the edge is his ability in the receiving game. It's nothing spectacular, but it's more, uh, it's, it certainly stands out uh, in his overview and just reports that you can see. So, Kylan Hill, I think, has a good chance, not only because he was drafted, I think uh, he has a great build. Offer something different than A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones, um, but we'll have to see how much he impresses this year in camp. Next up is Memphis running back Patrick Taylor, who was signed as an undrafted free agent um, last year. He spent all of last year on, for the Packers on the non-football injury list, um, so he was not able to participate in any practice as all, at all uh, until the end of the year. He had quite the impressive track record at uh, Memphis. He had to share his carries most of the time, but in his junior year of 2018, he ran for over 1,100 yards and a total of 16 touchdowns. Quite the runner. Not that uh, Memphis is playing anybody spectacular on their schedule week in and week out, uh, but he has certainly proven that he can put the numbers up. With these bottom of the roster guys, what's so important for them to have a chance to make the roster is not only playing the position very well, but also doing more than that, putting them some doing something else than just running the ball that makes them stick out and makes them more valuable than the other practice squad guys. Um, with Kylan Hill, it's his. Uh, ability in the receiving game. With Patrick Taylor, it's uh, his ability returning kicks as well as uh, pass protecting. Um, losing Jamal Williams is not only a big loss for the GOAT uh, in the running game, but also uh, pass protecting. He was one of the best in the league week in and week out protecting Rodgers. They bring him in specifically just to pass block, and he was uh, unbelievable 
um, in the backfield protecting A Rod. Hopefully, Rod is still our quarterback this year. Let's not let's we can move on from Jamal, unfortunately, but let's let's stay consistent with that quarterback for this year. But back to Patrick Taylor. Um, he's a little bit faster than Kylan Hill, uh, a little bit more shiftier, but he is still that guy that's going to impose his will, muscular guy that's going to sift arm, break tackles, all of that good stuff. And uh, let's we'll see if he gets an opportunity uh, this year to go, go on kick returns in the preseason uh, and do some stuff out of the backfield other than just running the ball. And uh, I think that those three preseason games are going to be really important for all of these guys uh, to prove what they can do. Next up, we have another draft pick from a few years back, and that is Dexter Williams from 2018. And look, uh, we haven't got the chance to see Dexter. He certainly had his share of injuries that he's had to play th- or fight through, um, but we haven't seen him on the field. Uh, he hasn't spent too much time on the roster at all. So who really knows what he's shown in camp? I, I guess um, him not being in the roster so far shows you too much, I guess, being a six-round pick. But maybe finally he turns on something this year. Um, another guy that's pretty muscular, <laughs> the same type of build. All these guys are really muscular guys, somewhere north of two th- uh, 200 pounds, uh, which will be the same with the next one, Mike Weber. But Dexter Williams, I'm not going to comment too much on, you know, what he did at Notre Dame because who knows uh, what he's shown in his first two years. He's had the opportunity to show what he has, and we just don't know that right now. Um, So uh, looking at Dexter Williams, his chances are either dead because he's shown nothing and they're just keeping him around to keep him around, or uh, they're very much alive and he just has to show it this year. So we'll have to see Dexter Williams. Maybe his time has come to an end with the Packers and he doesn't make the roster or the practice squad this year, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. And finally, we have Mike Weber out of Ohio State. Uh, The Packers signed him after he was released from the uh, Cowboys practice squad, I believe, uh, sometime around this time last year. And I want to say he was almost used as a fullback in Dallas. I could be wrong on that. Maybe I'm thinking of someone else. Um, but once again, another muscular guy uh, who was used more in the receiving game, at least in Ohio State. And I know I just use this uh, principle for Dexter Williams to not talk about his days at Notre Dame, um, but was used as a receiver in Ohio State. I think he has more to prove. He has to get his chances earned more than any other running back on this list. Um, but we'll have to see with Mike Weber. I think he has a chance. He's absolutely excellent and Madden, and once again, there's really not much we can definitiv- definitively say. We've sh- uh, they've all s- shown us what they can do on a college football field. Now it will be time for them to prove themselves in preseason and in training camp. So this will be a very exciting camp battle to watch. I cannot believe I spent 20 minutes talking about running backs that haven't seen the NFL field yet, and that will probably half of them won't ever wear a Packers uniform on TV at least. Uh, but that's all I got for you today. Let me know your thoughts on the Packers running back room down below in the comments. Subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow us on all the social medias. And as always, go Pack Go!